deconverted man here. There are many things that I find idiotic. But among those, the logical fallacies are really the only ones that matter. Either you have a logically coherent argument, or you do not. If you do not, we must be skeptical of your conclusions, no matter what they are. It is said that a paragraph is required for every sentence of lying. As such, the following video is extremely long. Here is my analysis of the top 10 things that are idiotic about atheism. Top 10 reasons why atheism is completely idiotic. So we've got two fallacies just to start things off. We've got poisoning of the well and an ad hominem. Poisoning of the well because you're saying this group of people is idiotic or their ideas or their thoughts are idiotic. That's irrelevant because even if it's true, their arguments stand or fail on their own. That's why it's an ad hominem because you're not attacking the arguments, you're attacking the group or the people. So, big deal. Even if it's true that it's idiotic, it doesn't make it false. First thing they say to you, atheism is science. <sighs> Straw man. No, this is not something that I have ever read or heard atheists say. Ever. Now... Maybe this guy can find us an example of this. I would ask him to provide 10 examples. Why 10? I, I don't know. Just because. I don't even think he can produce one example. But 10 would be good. I don't think he can. But no, this is a straw man. Atheism is not science. Atheism is simply without God. That's all it is. Nothing more, nothing less. Moving on. It's science, folks. End of story. You're stupid. If you don't believe, you're an arrogant, ignorant, knuckle-dragging Christian. So, continuing with the straw man, we have this idea that if you don't believe that atheism is science, then you're... A arrogant knuckle dragging Christian even if it's a Muslim or a Hindu that disagrees with that idea then they would be a Christian now how does that work so no this idea this statement is not true you shouldn't think that atheism is science because it's not. The two are separate entities. I don't know of anyone that said that. If somebody said that, they were wrong. And I would even apologize for them saying that. I'm sorry that they said that. They were wrong. And if you find me an example of that, I will tell them that they are wrong. Okay? Moving on. But when pressed for proof, it is science, or that science has all the answers, what do we get in return from these atheists? Mocking, ridicule, anger. If you are encountering people that are becoming emotional, it is probably because you are putting words in their mouth. If you are saying to an atheist or atheist, you keep telling me that atheism is science, they might indeed get upset at this because that's not what they told you and if you continue to insist that that's what they said that might indeed upset them a science cannot test god that sounds like an issue for theism not for atheism but again you're trying to say that atheism is science somehow so i guess this is a list of complaints that you can't use science to test God, therefore atheism is correct. Well, if atheism was science, which it's not, but if the conclusion that atheists draw was in line with science, then not being able to test God would be a reason to doubt God's existence. B. Science can't test history. We might as well throw all, all history books because they're bullshit because they're not science. This comes dangerously close to an outright lie, and the last thing that I need is for a phone to ring and me to get a call from outright lie, because right now I am so focused on analyzing this video that 
somebody outside of my self coming into this video would really just confuse me. Anyway, so this is a half truth. Of course, the only truth in it is that there is a portion of historical books that if we said, okay, we're going to use science and we're going to only keep the books that we can prove scientifically, there's a large number of books that we would have to toss out. Among them would be mythology books, which would include the Bible and other holy books because they are mythology and they can't be tested or verified by science. Okay, so that's the true portion, but we wouldn't, I don't think, do that because we're not going to throw away books because books are a good source of knowledge, information, and history, even if the books are in and of themselves not true, if they're fictional. We don't throw away Gone with the Wind just because it's not a true book. It's still a book. We just put it in the correct section of the library. We would put the Bible in the mythology section of the library because that's where it belongs. But we're not going to throw it away. And the other false part about this is that science cannot test history. Science can test history. The branch of archaeology is a good example of science being able to test history. So, no to that idea. The only part that's sort of true is that there are a few books that would not be testable by science, and we could doubt the conclusions of those books utilizing only the scientific method. But so what? We don't throw them away. It just means that we are skeptical of the conclusions of those books, which happens to include your particular book of mythology. Okay, C. Science can't tell you why you think you're a person. Do you believe you're a person, or do you believe you're just millions of single-celled organisms working together in a body? This is a loaded and malformed question with a false dichotomy in it. I cannot answer it the way that it is asked, because I do not believe either of these propositions. I have providential acceptance of the second one. I have an acceptance of it because the evidence agrees with it. So, if the evidence should be found to be wrong in some way, shape, or form, or we find a new understanding of it, then my ideas about it will change. But, so what? if that is the truth. We are just a collection of cells. Our brain is just a chemical neural interface. Our thoughts are the result of chemicals and electronic signals bouncing around and we may or may not have free will. And if it turns out that we don't have free will, then that's what the truth is. Are we to shed away from the truth when we discover it because we don't like it? Are we to turn our backs on what the facts are because it doesn't sit well with us? Are we to run away in terror at what the facts are because we are afraid? The truth is is the truth regardless of how we feel about it, what we think about it, if we understand it, or even if we believe it. The truth remains true. To say, well, science doesn't tell us what it means to be a human. It does tell us. It tells us in an objective terminology. That objective terminology might not sit well with you, but it's true. Why are you a person? Do you think you're a person? Yes, I think I'm a person. And I also think that I'm a collection of cells and chemicals and electronic impulses and so on and so forth. Because what a person is, is those things. 
So this is nothing more than a false dichotomy, a false choice between two things. That you can't say you're a person if you're a collection of these things. Yes, you can. Just in the same way that you can call a boat a boat, even though it's made up of several boards and planks and screws and nails and pitch and pine and so forth and so on. Well, if you're logical and scientific like these atheists say, you shouldn't think you're a person because you're just random chance. So, if you'll have noticed, you'll have seen the words appeal to consequence a few times already. Just because we don't like... X doesn't mean that X is false. Even if X is a horrible, awful, terrible thing that destroys everything as we've known it, if it's true, it's still true. The volcano is going to erupt. If that's a true statement, you can't say, well, that's going to kill billions of people, so therefore the volcano can't erupt. Or, well, but if it erupts, all these people will die. Yes, they will die. But that's not going to stop the volcano from erupting because whatever is true is true. Period. So, if you are logical and scientific, you will recognize the facts about the world. Whatever those facts might be. But, you can still call yourself a person because you still are a person. And D... Science can te cannot tell you what is right and wrong. This is one huge irrelevant statement that you've made, even if it was true, and I don't think that it is true. I think you can apply science to ethics. You can certainly use observation and testable data to formulate better ethics than you have now. So the ethics are what I base morality on. I personally subscribe to utilitarian ethics, which is do the most good for the most people and the least harm to the least amount of people. So within that, I can use the scientific method to make the ethics even better at doing what their job is supposed to be. And then I formulate my morals around those ethics. But even if it was the case that you could never apply science to ethics or morality it wouldn't mean anything. It would still be irrelevant because science would still be useful for a number of other things. You haven't invalidated science, nor have you shown anything beyond that, well, science isn't always useful, or, or that science is insufficient for this particular thing. Okay, and so we have to use something else for that. Very well. What do we use for it then? Then you have to say, well, we use ethics. Okay, great. We're on the same page. We're in agreement. But to get to that point where we agree, you have to use a logically coherent argument, which you have not done. So because you have not done that, I cannot agree with you. So obviously morality doesn't exist either. But it's not true that science cannot be applied to ethics or morality. If it was true and we were only using the scientific method to decide what things we agreed with, then morality would be something that we would be skeptical of if it was the case that science could not be applied to ethics and or morality. It is not the case, but we're going to go into your realm and pretend that that's the way it is. Okay, so if we were only using science and science could not study ethics or morals, then we would be skeptical of ethics and morals. And that would be the end of that. Now, do morals and ethics still exist? Well, we don't know because we can't study them. So we would be skeptical about them. What about behavior? Well, then we would have to ask whether or not we can study behavior utilizing science. And so we would find that, yes, we can indeed study behavior of primates as well as humans. And we can deduce certain things from that behavior. Although... I don't know at what point behavior becomes morality in that situation, but we still have something to study. It might not be ethics or morals if that was true, but it's not. So the whole thing is a big... Uh-oh. It's an outright lie, isn't it? I'm not going to answer the phone. I don't want anyone else in this video. Moving on. 
you can do whatever you want because science is king and even if god is king you can still do anything at all so this is nothing more than a 2q because it doesn't prove anything we're both in the same boat as it is said we're both in the same position even if there's a god we can still do anything we want we can still do things we don't want to do we still have ability to perform arbitrary actions that are both good or negative consequences to the rest of humanity if somebody decides to run over someone else whether or not there's a god is irrelevant because god is not stopping them from performing that action now if somebody is at a bar and they get drunk and they go stumbling into their car and they drive off and the bartender did not call the police the people around did not try to stop that person and at no point no one that saw this person did anything all of those people have failed their moral obligation to attempt to stop that individual from performing an action that is going to be dangerous so those people could in theory be held partially accountable in a court of law for being accessories to the drunk driving because they could have done something to prevent it but they didn't so where is god's accountability god is watching all of humanity do horrible things to each other and is not doing anything to stop it at any point in time and we're told at least from the christian perspective that god does that so that we can have free will which means that prayer could never affect anything because prayer would be a violation of free will but nonetheless we're told that God does not intervene because that would somehow negate free will. So God's moral accountability is zero. So you can still do anything even if there is a God. More to the point, not only can you do anything, but you can be forgiven for the evils that you've done. So, yes, you were drunk and you killed lots of people while you were drunk. And you served your time in jail, and there you came to Jesus, and you repented, and you came to God, and blah, 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 blah. And then you're forgiven of your sins because you happen to believe in the right thing. So your evil actions, in the end, did not matter, as far as God is concerned. It doesn't restore those people to life. It doesn't help the people that suffered. It doesn't negate the actions and it doesn't really punish the crime it's just a ah yeah that's okay you believed in the right thing so what you did doesn't matter anymore so not only is your system a system where what you do really doesn't matter but if you do something bad you're forgiven for it so it really doesn't matter what you do in your system as long as you believe the right thing. Now you might say, oh, but a real Christian doesn't do bad things. Well, tell me that the next time you do sins. Because you're going to do sins. And in fact, some teachings have it that you continually do sins and that you're guilty of the first original sin even if you yourself are not currently sinning. So... There's never really a clear-cut way to live a sinless life. If there was, you wouldn't need salvation, would you? But you do need salvation. So, whatever bad things you've done or are doing or will do are all forgiven. So you can still do whatever you want, even though there is a God. So, I've exposed your 2Q... And I've shown that your system is more flawed than secularism is. Because, see, in secularism, doing something wrong means that you get a punishment. And that we should try to prevent somebody from doing something wrong. And if we don't, then we are to 
also to blame in part for the wrong that they've done because we could have done something and we failed to act. We're still in the same boat. People can do anything they want whether there is a God or not. Number two, that's number one. Number two, atheists say we don't need to prove atheism because it's a lack of belief. We don't have to prove it. you got to prove your religion. It looks like I'm going to have to explain the burden of proof and how language works. If I say I believe in X, I owe nobody proof to establish whatever X is. I simply believe in it. It might be true. It might not be true. It is a belief that I hold, and that's the end of the story. If I say X is true, then I have to show and or demonstrate and or argue that X is true. If I say ice cream is delicious, this is a subjective opinion that I am expressing. If I say that ice cream is poisonous, I need to demonstrate that the ice cream is poisonous. So, if you are saying in relation to your particular God that it is true, it is a real thing, then you have the burden to explain how that is so. If you merely believe in it, you have no burden to shoulder. Now, the opposite side, the other side of the coin, says we doubt that. We don't believe in that. That's it. It's not that there is none. That is not what we are saying. If there is someone that's saying that, then they have a burden. They have to produce an argument of some sort. If they will not or cannot, then you get to be skeptical of that conclusion. Okay. Great. Wonderful. But you still have to produce your side of it. If they will not produce their side and you will not produce yours, then we have to be skeptical of both sides, which means we don't have any belief one way or the other. There you go. So skepticism still wins. So you're still left without a God to believe in or think that it is true. Now, what about Shiva the Destroyer, Allah, and Zeus? Would you say that these things do not exist? Or would you say that you don't believe in them? Depending on what you say, you have a burden or not. I already did a video on this meme called Prove There Is No God, You First. So if you really want to press the case that I need to prove that there is no God, you need to go first then. So go check out that video, come back to this, and we'll see where we're at. There is a guy here on YouTube called Shock of God. There's a guy on YouTube called Dark Matter. There's a guy on YouTube called Atheist Gamer. There's a girl on YouTube called Karen S. There's a guy on YouTube called Deconverted Man. Yeah, and so what? Who cares? He has a running video series, this Shock of God guy. Yeah, and I don't care. It's irrelevant. I'm skipping this. I have told my subscribers already that... When and if I hit 400 subs, that I will deal with Shock of God. Until then, I'm not going to discuss him, so I have to move on to the next points that you're trying to make here. But see, they don't have any answers, and they don't have any proof that they're right. I do have answers, depending on what the question is, but I might not have all the answers, but that's irrelevant. And as far as you being wrong, that does matter. But it doesn't make me right, nor does me being wrong make you right. Neither is the case. For you to be right and for me to be wrong requires that we establish certain criteria. That is the essence of logical argumentation. Number three, atheists tell you that evolution is fact. It's fact. There's plenty of religious people that have no problem with biological evolution, but... Who cares about the facts? Because we're just in la-la imagination pretend land. And we're just going to ignore that. We're going to ignore the fact that the majority of scientists have no problem with it. We're going to ignore the fact that we have a National Center for Science Education that says, Hey, let's promote this. This is fact. This is true. This is real. Here's why. Here's the evidence. Here's the stuff. 
Let's just ignore all of that and just pretend like this guy is doing that it's just atheists that are saying it and that no one has given any evidence even though they have over and over and over and over and over and over and over. It's fact, and if you question it, you're an idiot. So far, I've done about 15 videos completely mocking atheism and presenting a viewpoint that actually makes sense. It doesn't matter how many videos you've made, and it doesn't matter if you think that they have made sense. In fact, I can almost guarantee they don't make sense because you have indicated this with the phrasing of what type of videos they are. Mocking videos. That sets them in the category of erastic dialogue, which suggests to me that your methodology will be to use insults rather than logic to get to the conclusions that you want to get to, because you're trying to harm your opposition. Now, the goal of an erastic dialogue is supposed to be to get to the deeper basis of the conflict. I don't think erastic dialogue is useful because throwing insults at each other rarely, if ever, actually gets to that goal. So I find it quite unuseful. But nonetheless, that's what you would be engaging in. And as such, you will not have a dialogue that has a logically coherent argument so none of your dialogues will make sense. They will all be insults towards atheism. The other thing I can say without even looking at your other videos is that they will not make sense if they deny biological evolution, the age of the Earth, or where the Earth is located in relation to the rest of the universe. So if you're a young Earther or you're a geocentrist, ist then those things will not align with reality and thus will not and cannot make sense if you continue to deny biological evolution in those other videos then that too will not make sense because it is not reality there's a group in new york who thinks that the earth is flat you can join them if you really want i mean they believe the earth is flat and i can just imagine that group producing a video where they're like, atheists keep telling us that the world is a sphere. They they won't prove it, though. And nothing they ever done has proven it. Oh, they showed us a picture, but that that's not proof. Oh, they showed us things from space. That's not proof. We don't know that we ever went to space, either, because the government, it's all a conspiracy. They, they faked the moon landing. We didn't have the technology back then. Instead of appealing to your own self, why not appeal to facts or logic or both? I'm appealing to logic. I'm saying this is a logical fallacy. Therefore, his conclusions are going to be something that we have to be skeptical about. At any rate, I think I've made my point. Now to your next point so I can point out some more logical fallacies. Please proceed. On those videos, I've had hordes of atheists give me thumbs down. I've, I had a hundred thumbs down in five days' time on one of them. Yeah, so what? I mean, do you want people to like your stuff? Then make stuff that people will like. Who cares if people like it or not? I might hate what you have to say, but if you had a logically coherent argument, I would agree with it. So make the argument. Of all these hordes of atheists, telling me that evolution is a fact, so far of the 10 plus times I've asked for proof, I have not had one atheist, not even one, of the thousands who watch my videos provide one piece of evidence that macroevolution is fact. Not, not one. Okay, first, premise one, lobsters exist. If lobsters exist, then... And see, the mitigations of the infrigrations in premise four are equal to... Excuse me, but that's not true. You've been presented with plenty of evidence. However, you've created some sort of unimaginable standard to which no evidence could ever possibly stand up, and have failed to communicate to us exactly what meets that standard. Not to mention the fact that the internet holds a plethora, an almost infinite amount of information supporting evolution. You would almost have to go out of your way to not read it 
which I can only chalk up to intellectual dishonesty. Micro and macro evolution are not two different types of evolution. They do not describe different types of mechanisms or different types of changes. The terms only refer to periods of time. If you want to zoom in on a small space, say within a few generations, you would call that micro evolution. But if you zoom back and want to see how a species changed over a long period of time, say hundreds of thousands or millions of years, you would use the term macro evolution. Macro evolution is actually just a combination of small micro evolutions. From the way you form your questions, and the kind of evidence you seem to be looking for suggests to me that you're actually looking for a type of proof that doesn't exist and can't exist. I can't prove that macroevolution exists under your definition because your definition is simply wrong. What you would have us believe is that a chicken doesn't just give birth to a slightly different chicken. A chicken gives birth to an ostrich, and then an ostrich gives birth to an alligator. And that's simply not how macroevolution works. The terms micro and macroevolution were coined in the early 1900s. They were used to quickly describe an idea without actually having to dive into it. Not to mention these words were actually originally written in Russian and translated into English. There isn't actually a consensus within the scientific community about exactly what these terms mean. Quite often scientists will accuse each other of misusing the term. I'm actually of the camp that chooses not to use the terms at all, because from my own scientific studies, micro and macro evolution are the exact same thing. The only difference is the time scale. So why do we have this disagreement about the validity of the theory of evolution? I would imagine the problem is that you simply do not understand it. So let me give you a quick reflection pressure course. In the scientific world, the word theory does not mean an imagined idea. It means a hypothesis that has been tested rigorously, has been sent through the coals, has been published, has been scrutinized even further, and has passed all the trials to the point where it is the most plausible explanation. Evolution is not a debate. It is an indisputable fact. Now, the theory of evolution is not based on the observations made by a single scientific discipline, but in fact, several different disciplines. Just to name a few, paleontology, comparative anatomy, embryology, developmental genetics, mutation studies, transmission genetics, population and quantitative genetics, evolutionary biology, and even geology. Now, by all respects, each of these classes of scientific study don't really have much to do with each other. However, when it comes to the theory of evolution, the findings they make match up perfectly. One form of study could make a hypothesis, and the next form of study would confirm that hypothesis with findings. Now, I could go through examples for every single form of study, but I'll stick to paleontology, and as far as I'm concerned, this is the only nail in the coffin that's required. If Noah's flood occurred, as the Kenthovens of the world would have us believe, each layer of soil settled after shaking in a flood. If that were true, we would find fossils of all different types, shapes, sizes, mixed throughout the strata, we would find humans and dinosaurs together. We'd find trilobite mixed with elephants. We'd find squirrels next to saber-toothed tigers. However, that is not what we find. In fact, the further down we go through the geological columns, the less diverse, the less complex, the less evolved our findings become. In fact, we've become so good at predicting which strata different species will be in, we were able to predict what layer the first walking fish would be on. And sure enough, we found it, the tiktaalik, exactly where we expected to find it. If evolution were not true, we should not be able to make predictions like this. What creationists would have us believe is that each animal type can only evolve within a certain boundary. They can't cross into another type of species. Now, how do they define these boundaries? Arbitrarily, of course. If something's a dog, it can only be a dog. If something's a cat, it can only be a cat. Now, how far along can something evolve before it stops? We don't know, because they don't actually have any scientific findings to back up this claim. They just say, that's what we like, so that's what they go with. Yeah, yeah, okay, armored skeptic, but how much evidence is there for biological evolution? Mountains upon mountains of evidence. More than anybody could explain within one lifetime. People have dedicated their entire lives just proving one small aspect, putting all the pieces together for us to make this theory a nice, smooth, impenetrable force of scientific knowledge. Wait a minute, how did you get 
into my video in the first place. Magic. Magic is never an answer for anything. Wormhole. The Einstein bridge that that's okay, a wormhole, but see that's um let's see, where do I even With magic. No, no, that is not an exploit stop it. Say something other than magic. It stands for Maximal Angular Gizmo Inclusion Computer. You just made that up. That's not a real thing. Science. That doesn't explain, but how? Could science do it? The inverse time effect allowed with with the wormhole, and, and then you you might there there there's you could with the uh the oh what is it called? Then there you go. Well, my work here is done. You've utterly and completely confused me. Confused you? <laughs> oh shit. Dude, I just had serious deja vu. Okay, number four. Atheists confusing science with blind faith and religion. Yes, I know. They're quite well known for telling everyone else that they're blind believers. But ironically, they're complete hypocrites. They have no clue what science or evidence even is, apparently. Science equals a branch of knowledge or study dealing with the body of facts or truths, systematically arranged and showing the operation of general laws, such as the mathematical sciences. Okay? Now, just a little bit of background. I've taken Calc 1, 2, 3, 4 and differential equations. Physics, statics, dynamics, thermodynamics, and a shitload of other classes, because I'm a mechanical engineer. So I think I know a little bit about math. I think I know a little bit about science. I think I know a little bit about evidence. So far, no one has provided any scientific evidence that macroevolution even occurs. Okay? Now, you can provide proof of microevolution, and see, this is where they bait and switch you. They tell you, we got proof. Proof evolution it, it happens. But guess what? It depends on what type of evolution you're talking about. See, everybody believes in microevolution. That's called adaptation. That's within the DNA strand field, okay? But then they use that proof from microevolution to prove macroevolution, which is total bullshit. All right, so this is where I am, and this is how much more I have to go and... You know what? To be honest, I don't remember recording this. I'm going to play this and find out what it is. Alright, so this is where I am, and this is how much more I have to go and... You know what? To be honest, I don't remember recording this. I'm going to play this and find out what it is. Number five, we're only on number five. I even got through hardly any of these. We've got ten of these. Atheists provide no answers for anything. Yeah, so what? Even if it's true, it's irrelevant. Even if it's the case that no atheist ever produces any answer for anything, that means absolutely nothing. What answers are we expecting of this group? What question are we asking of that group? And... Even if they give us no answer for anything ever, so what? What does that mean? What relevance does that have? How does it make it idiotic? You know, let me uh, go ahead and quote your own holy book for you. It is better to be considered a fool than to remove all doubt by opening your mouth. So perhaps the atheist would rather you consider them a fool than to say something wrong and remove all doubt that they are in fact a fool. It's better to remain silent when you don't know the answer than make up an answer and be shown that in fact you're wrong. So if you don't know, say, I don't know, or just say nothing at all. What's wrong with that? Literally. Now, if you ask an atheist for proof God doesn't exist, he will give you all manner of materials and studies that they have rapidly produced. Okay? Wait, 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 whoa, whoa, whoa! Your complaint is that when asked for proof against God that they offer you proof against God? How much that? Or if you ask them why heaven doesn't exist, they'll joyfully provide you some atheist book to read. Hey, remember that time when I said that thing about you complaining that you're not getting proof and then people give you proof? Yeah, same thing. That has 20 arguments why heaven doesn't exist. However, when you ask them for answers, such as how did the Big Bang start, 
They say, well, we don't know. I want to make sure I've got this right. So you're complaining because when you ask for answers, they give you a book or a couple of books that has potential answers or at least argumentations in them. I don't know if you've even bothered to read that, but then they don't have the answer for this one thing, so they therefore don't have any answers at all, somehow. So that's like if I said, hey, look, I want to understand what a mechanical engineer does, and you say, go to this website, or here's this book, and I say, ah, okay, fine, but what's uh, 7,502 to the power of 520? And you're like, I don't know. And I'm like, well, then you don't have any answers. What? I mean, just because you don't know something doesn't mean you have Then the other problem is just because you don't know something doesn't mean you know what the answer is not. You know the answer isn't anything from negative infinity all the way up to 5 billion because it's going to be bigger than 5 billion. Without knowing what the actual answer is, you can eliminate all those as potential answers. So... There's a number of problems with this idea right there, beyond it being also irrelevant and non-sequitur. Or if you ask him why water is the only substance that increases in size when it freezes out of all materials, giving fish the ability to live in cold temperatures because ice is on top of the water rather than below. Because when the ice is on top, it actually allows the water to be stay warm. It's a closed system. The ice was on the bottom, they would all freeze and die. Okay, why is it that one substance is different than all the other ones? Well, this is an interesting appeal to ignorance. I don't know how this works, therefore X is true. It also seems to be a potential, and I'm going to just say it is, an appeal to personal incredulity. I can't believe it isn't specially designed. And if you click on the screen right now, you'll go to SciShow that explained this whole thing. But we can't trust them because they use science, right? Oh, my word. Maybe it has something to do with intelligent design. I don't know. It's kind of weird. the logical fallacy right now. <laughs> they have no answers. They just know yours are bullshit. You know, I guess you just don't like the way reality works. You come up with a proposition, and I say, I doubt that that proposition is true. That is my position. My position is one of doubt. Okay? So you're saying that all I need to do is actually know that your position is bull. In that case, not only do I just doubt your side, I know that your side is wrong. So if you say the Earth is flat, you're wrong. And I know that you're wrong. I don't need to know what the answer actually is. I don't need to know that the Earth is a sphere or is sphere-shaped. I don't need to know that to know that you're wrong, just like with that mathematical problem. I don't need to know what the answer is to know what the answer is not, to identify something as being wrong. I only need a certain amount of information to be able to do that. So this, again, is irrelevant. Number six, atheists believe that the ancient aliens possibly, ancient aliens possibly created mankind. But of course, no, God could never make you. Are you a fucking stupid or something? So... The straw man is obviously in place here, and having listened to this many times, I know that you're referring to Dawkins who said something like this, and you're taking that way out of context and cherry-picking it and saying that all atheists have said this, which they haven't. So it's one big giant straw man. But let's have the experiment that can differentiate between an intelligent being called God and an intelligent being of aliens. What experiment would you want to posit that could tell us humans 
what the intelligent designer was. Because if you want to insist that humans and other animals and life in general requires an intelligent designer, well, that's going to need a test too. But you're, of course, saying that that's just the way it is. It's obvious that that's the way it is. And you have no test for that. But who cares, right? Then at least come up with a test that would tell us how we would know it was a god versus aliens that did it. How would we know that? How would we be able, be able to tell the difference from one to the other? And in fact, I think that if we went that route and we insisted upon intelligent design, either for a deity or for aliens, there are certain things that we should be able to posit based on our knowledge of either that deity or the aliens. We know that aliens would have have to have a certain amount of technology to be able to seed various planets in the universe and we should also see examples of them seeding other planets because just seeding one planet is an awful waste of time energy and resources so we should find examples of other planets that they attempted to seed beyond our own I also would expect to find flaws in this seeding process that could be used to explain why we have genetic flaws today. Now, if we're going to posit a deity did this, okay, we would. I still would expect to see some evidence of this. Why just this one planet? Why not all the planets? Why isn't there life anywhere? But then if we're going to add that this deity is extremely intelligent then why are there flaws in the genetic code unless the deity let things go on their own once the things were seeded which then there's no way to differentiate between that deity and the aliens so that's where we're stuck at it could be either one the one we have nothing further to postulate on we don't know what a deity is like period, other than the ones you might posit from different religions, but we can know a little bit about what an alien culture might be like based on what we're like. Although, again, that might be mere speculation as well. So, here's an idea. Let's do neither as a possibility and say we don't know, but if one really wants to press forward this idea that it has to be intelligently designed, then well, give us the test to show that. Failing that, give us the test to determine deity versus aliens. And if you don't have that either, then yeah, we can say aliens just as much as you can say deity. And both have failed the burden to prove that they're true, which might have been Dawkins' point. Yes, of course, if evolution is not a good fit for explaining how we got here, Professor, Professor Richard Dawkins has a new intriguing solution for you. Ancient aliens. I'd love to be able to respond to this, but it's cherry pick, so I have no idea what the bleep Dawkins originally said. I'm betting it had to do with abiogenesis, though. And now it's time for That Could Have Been Said by an Atheist! If we put God in the picture, we're just talking about fairy tales and spaghetti flying monsters and bullshit like that. And now, back to the video! Seven. Atheists are emphatic that God does not exist. You know what does exist? Lobsters. I've got proof right here of lobsters. Right here on your screen. Oh, that's not a lobster. That's a lob. Oh, man. And they're quite clear of this. That it's not blind faith. They're quite clear it's not blind faith. It's science. And that they have scientific proof that God doesn't exist. That's not how science works. I thought you said that you understood how science works. Science could never prove a negative. We can't prove that reindeer cannot fly. We can show that it would defy all the laws of physics that we understand that reindeer could ever perform the feat of flying. But you could always claim that when we weren't looking, that's when the reindeer decided to fly. You could always offer an alternate explanation. But if you go with the data, you would say, no, reindeer don't fly because that's what the data says. They can't fly due to physics. Well, if there's a god, god could make reindeer fly. I guess if god can violate the laws of physics as we understood it, sure. But 
then you need proof that there is a god and that god has indeed made reindeer fly. If you don't have that proof, then we get to be skeptical of the conclusions. Wouldn't you have to have the ability of God to prove there's no God? No, you don't have to have that ability. Oh my word. Wouldn't you have to have the ability of a wizard to know that there were no wizards? Wouldn't you have to have the ability of fairies to know that there are no fairies? You would have to have the ability of Q to know that there is no Q, etc., etc., etc. Seeing you would have to have all knowledge of reality, be able to look under every rock in the galaxy, and be able to look in all 13 dimensions. Hey, Russell's teapot! Russell's teapot! Russell's teapot! Russell's teapot! Russell's teapot! They know everything about this, when in reality they're eating Cheetos and masturbating to porn, and getting on YouTube calling themselves the Amazing Atheist. No, I get on YouTube and call myself DEConverted Man. Number eight, atheists say there is no proof of intelligent design. Yet if you only open your eyes, you can see all manner of complex ecosystems, life forms, solar systems, the beauty of reality everywhere in front of you, a sunset. But that's all random chance. Looking around is just not good enough as a way to determine how things came to be. Unless you want to appeal to personal incredulity or appeal to ignorance, Oh, I don't know how that tree got there. Maybe fairies put it there. I can't explain how else it got there, so must be fairies. It's not good enough. And why is it always the beauty of nature? Why not the maggots or the viruses and stuff? How do you explain all that? Well, that too would have to be the result of your intelligent designer who saw fit to put things harmful as well as beneficial. Oh, well, but those things are there because of sin, or some other stupid excuse you're going to give. Nonetheless, it's nothing more than appeal to ignorance and personal incredulity. Moving on. Okay, number nine. Atheists, they think they have to no longer act right. They think they can do whatever they want. Now that they know there's no God. Explain to me why there are more Christians than there are atheists in prisons. Explain to me how is it that a more secular nation like Europe is doing better in every way than America is doing. America is by and far more of a religious nation, is doing far worse than Europe is, and Europe is a far more secular nation. They're doing better. Why is that the case? Shouldn't we expect it to be the opposite if what you're saying is true? Shouldn't we see, like, say, South Korea which is atheists because they make them atheists, shouldn't we just see them running amok and killing each other left and right, up and down? We don't see that. We see order and control. Too much of order and control, I mind you. But nonetheless, we don't see the sort of chaos that you're telling us that we should be seeing. And so your idea that atheists just do whatever the belief they want is false. We humans will do whatever we want, regardless of our beliefs or lack of beliefs. That's the truth. The scary truth is that religion can propel people to do things that are outright crazy things, killing themselves and killing other people. That is something that a secularist would not do. They would not encourage killing of self or other people. They would encourage working towards humanity, helping others, helping each other to grow, encouraging education and science, encouraging education, period, and living for today, helping each improve ourselves and improve today because we don't know if there's going to be a tomorrow, but we do know that if we don't improve things that it's only going to get worse. That's what I see from secularism. What I see from fundamentalists is, let's stop believing in biological evolution. Let's teach that the Earth is an absurd number of years old. Let's deny science. Let's not take our kids to the hospital because God will heal them if we just pray hard enough. That's the sort of insanity that I see from fundamentalists. And that's just the Christian ones. I'm not even going to talk about the Islamic fundamentalists because we know what happened with them. Planes plus buildings equals bad result. 
Okay? So, when the fundamentalists of the world start doing good and the secularists start doing bad, then you can get on your moral high horse. They can be asses and jerks to everybody on YouTube and everywhere in the world. They can be asses because they know they're right. But then they expect you to act nice back and be a good Christian and take turn the other cheek and, and you know, all that kind of stuff. While they are mocking you and making fun of God, while not proving anything, while not providing any proof, while they don't have any proof for their beliefs whatsoever, and no one ever challenges them, they expect you to just sit there and take it. Boo hoo hoo. Turn the other cheek. That's in there. It's not my fault that it's in there. Love your enemies. That's in there. <laughs> Who cares about what Jesus said? Anyways, so you're upset that people are treating you badly? Probably because you're making videos where you mock them. That might be a reason why they're treating you badly. As far as this straw man that atheists have never been challenged, many of them have been challenged. I personally have yet to encounter a real challenger. I've only debated two theists, and one of those debates is still up in the air because the opponent ran away for two weeks to go... Re fix his rebuttal or something I guess and I'm still waiting for that so I haven't actually been challenged yet and the non-theist that was easy too I haven't had an actual real challenge so challenge me but the problem is you're gonna have to know how to debate which means you're gonna have to understand logic to be able to actually present me with a real challenge and I still haven't found an atheist yet to provide any answers. And I've found that the only answer that theists provide is God. And the God that they provide is different depending on which theist you ask. What's your point? I'd like to see one actually provide something. So far, I have gotten nothing but bullcrap from atheists wrapped in a little science wrapper. So your complaint is that you think it's pseudoscience rather than real science. Biological evolution is real science. You don't understand it, comprehend it, or care about it, clearly, but that is actual science. It's not pseudoscience. If it was, then your complaint would be legitimate that they're not really giving you a real answer. They're giving you a pseudoscience answer. Number 10. Atheists will tell you that you are a mind numb zombie. Who will believe anything? Of course, this is a straw man, but let me give you a logical argument against this. Well, sir or ma'am, if that was true, then I would believe that statement. But I don't believe that statement, therefore that statement is untrue. There you go. You're welcome. Yeah, most of these atheists I've encountered are just spewing mantras from their dear leaders, such as Richard, Daw Richard Dawkins. You've got to be kidding. And phraseologies like the god of the gaps. Man, don't you just hate when those skeptics keep using those complicated, logical terms? Man, that's really annoying. It's like, and they don't provide any proof. They don't look into anything, of course. You know, like one of theirs is like, Jesus, he's just a story from the ancient Roman and Egyptian gods. You know what I mean? No, it's all bullshit if you actually look into it. You look into the Jesus story, it is all bullshit. <laughs> oh, you meant that the idea that it came from the Romans is bullshit. No, no, no. The pagan parallels to Jesus are striking. They are very similar in scope and how they tell the story. So it's not impossible that these stories could have been based on pagan stories and myth. The people they mock is what they are. Keep in mind that they don't have time for fact-checking. We're actually thinking about stuff, though they call themselves free thinkers. Maybe we should call themselves free non-thinkers. I don't know. What do you think? is the longest video I've ever done. Not that that means anything, but that's just kind of an interesting trivia that you now know. Number of logical fallacies, 65. 
I've had worse. I've had an infinite once. <laughs> eh. Anyways, look. It doesn't matter that atheism might be considered as idiotic. In fact, the only thing that you could really say that would actually work is atheists don't believe in God. And it, that's idiotic because I believe in God. There you go. You don't even really need an argument for that because you're just attacking the position. You're not attacking the arguments. You're attacking kind of the people. Saying, I think that that's dumb. I think that that's idiotic. I think that that's stupid. Maybe give a reason, sure. But it still isn't an argument. It doesn't matter. So I'm not even going to argue that point if something is or isn't idiotic. I'm just going to say, yeah, okay, and... What's your point? Where's your argument? Because you don't have one. So I dismiss your ideas until you have one. Then if you present an argument, as was done here, that argument has to be logical. And it's not, so we have to be skeptical of the conclusions. And then less than until we have a logically coherent argument, we have to continue to be skeptical of the conclusions.